I was browsing my local hobby shop the other day, and I saw something that caught my eye. These Death Dog minis had two heads, which I thought was cool, but I thought I could find a cooler body for them. Eventually, I stumbled across this Raging Troll mini, and I thought he'd fit the bill. The pack came with two minis, so I spent some time comparing the two and figuring out which one I thought would fit better on the body. I eventually settled on this guy, because I thought his heads looked more dynamic and would fit the body better. First thing I had to do was liberate the heads from the body, which was much easier said than done. These WizKids minis are made of a soft plastic, much softer than the stuff that comes on sprues from like Games Workshop or War Games and Landing, but it was still an involved process. And after applying a lot of elbow grease, it was done. Then came the much easier task of removing the head from the troll. It's the same plastic, it's just the neck on this guy's a lot thinner, so it's easier to cut. After doing some quick comparisons, I liked what I saw. So I drilled, pinned, and super glued. Oh, it started coming together. Next up was the fur. I mixed up some green stuff and I started applying it to the different patches of skin that I thought it would look good with. I started by using a toothpick with the poke and pull method. And eventually I switched to a paper clip. I'm still fairly new to sculpting green stuff, but thankfully fur isn't that complicated. Something I learned while doing all this is if you're doing all over green stuff work like this, do it in sections. Let the green stuff on one section cure fully before you work on another. Not pictured here is the about two or three times I had to completely redo his collar or some of his arms because I squished them while working on a patch of fur on the other side of the model. It was worth the trouble though. Once the fur looked right and the green stuff cured, that's when it really started to look like something. Oh, yeah. it's all coming together. Next up was the base. I 3D printed this 50mm one on my Ender 3, which I thought would be perfect for him. But before I could put him on, I had to remove the puddle base that came with him. It was only a little easier than removing the heads from the Death Dogs earlier. After cleaning him up, I realized that one foot actually stood a little higher than the other. So I broke out some cork and looked for a tactical rock for him to stand on. I found a chunk I liked, but it was a little too thick. So I split it down the middle, and after doing some test fits and making a few more minor adjustments, it worked perfectly. Once I was happy with the position, I glued the cork down with some super glue. I then drilled out his foot, pinned him using a paper clip. One of my favorite ways to add ground texture to a miniature base was stolen directly from Anders Talks Hobbies. After laying down a thick layer of Mod Podge, I then dredge it in a mixture of dollar store sand and clean cat litter. On a 
a whim, I decided to go digging through my bits from the Skellington Regiment from Mantic, just to make the base a scotch more interesting. And I found this dude. I like the bird, but I don't think it would fit with what I'm going for. In this particular mini, anyway. Now it's spooky. I sealed the ground with some drops of isopropyl alcohol, followed by some drops of watered down PVA. And once that dried, I primed it and I gave it a Xenophil highlight. Because I was going to be using mostly transparent paints, I went pretty heavy on the white. I'm a little bit better at painting than I am at sculpting with green stuff. But after a couple tries with the skin, and the fur, I landed on something I was satisfied with. And after painting the mouth and the teeth, he was finished. Once I improve at painting, I might feel comfortable documenting my process more. But overall, I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. There's dozens of ways I can think to use this guy for D&D. He's perfect for games like the Silver Bayonet. And if you're playing Age of Sigmar, I think he makes a pretty good Vark's Gear proxy, either for the Virkos or Avangori dynasty. Speaking of D&D, I may or may not have included a 5e stat block for him in the description. If you like this sort of content, leave a like and stay tuned. I got a bunch more stuff planned coming down the pipeline. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.